Hi everybody. Welcome to another episode of Extreme Paint and Bodies Sergeant Spray Gun Productions. I hope you enjoy this video. In part one of my demonstration video, Painting Ghost Flames, first thing I'm going to do once everything's ready to go is I'm going to get my spray gun set up or confirmed. It's set up. I'm just confirming. Panel's been wiped down with wax and grease remover and I'm going to tack rag it off prior to applying the first coat of base coat. Speeding up the video just to shorten the video up a little bit. What I did there on that silver spot or gray spot uh, I'm simulating a primer spot. I didn't want to take the time to spray actual primer, wait for it to dry and then sand it. I could just spray some silver on there real quick paint right over it in 10 minutes. We'll pretend that this hood is already the same color that I'm painting it now and what you want to do then is cover that primer spot before you do anything else. After that I go around the edges make sure I get all the edges good. I'm not pulling the trigger all the way there's no need in, in blasting a bunch of paint just to paint that thin edge. I'll go all the way around like that a couple of times during the base coating process probably not every coat it's not needed. In this case I did this before the first coat and before the last coat. Once the edges are fairly well covered up and the primer spot apply your first coat of base coat. I'm using the Technopro light with the HV30 HVLP air cap and a 1.3 millimeter fluid tip. The air pressure for the first coat I think I've got it set at about 15 psi just to get color on the panel. I'll step up the pressure a little on the second coat and the third and final coat if the third coat is the final coat I'll spray the base coat at about 20 to 22 psi you might not be able to tell in the video but I'm triggering the gun at the end of each pass releasing the fluid just momentarily just to save a little paint it's just a habit of mine a lot of painters will just hold the trigger down and just sweep back and forth without triggering the gun at all. I think that wastes a little bit of paint, but I've even seen painters do it when they're painting multiple panels at the end of each pass. They just flick the gun out a little bit rather than briefly let up on the trigger when they change directions. I guess it works. I've seen some pretty good painters do that. If I didn't do that, and since I'm not in the habit of flicking out the ends of each pass, I would probably end up with a dark spot everywhere I changed directions from overloading the paint in that spot where I changed the direction of my pass. second coats getting better coverage almost completely covered prior to the third coat I'll tack off the, the panel again I don't always tack off after each coat or prior to each coat but at least prior to the first and prior to the last On a full paint or something larger, I'll, I'll tack rag each, each coat, including, in most cases, the surrounding masking material, because that could be, that could be a source of dust getting in your clear coat if, if you got overspray on your masking.
not all the masking, but the the, as, the masking that's near the panel that's going to be painted a foot or two. I have to apologize that the uh, the audio in the original video isn't quite in sync. I'm kind of new to video editing, and I didn't realize until making this video that if you detach the audio from the video and you start cropping the video the uh, the audio doesn't follow along so lesson learned I don't know how to reattach the audio to, to fix that and I didn't find out about that until I had put too much time into cropping so I just left it alone That's the last coat of base. Since I got some leftover paint here, I'll just mess around and change the gun adjustments from small, narrow fan pattern to, to wide. Just to show the different ways you can set up a gun. I really find very little need for a minigun seeing how you can set up a gun this way particularly with this cup system that I have it comes with a 24 ounce collapsible cup 9 ounce collapsible cup and a 3 ounce uh, non collapsible cup 3 ounce cup is just perfect for something you would otherwise use a minigun for Just messing around since I've got plenty of extra leftover materials. That blue is made by De Beers. I've never sprayed that stuff before, so I'm just. It was given to me. Somebody's probably just trying to offload the paint, so I took it. I don't know how old it is. It's pretty old, so. I'm going to apply some intercoat clear now. And what that'll do, since I'm doing some graphics, is that'll create a barrier between the base coat and the graphics and the clear coat. And then you'll have quite a bit of time to do your graphics without having to worry about a recoat window for the base coat, which is generally 8 to 24 hours. If you can do your graphics quick enough, then you don't need to apply the inner coat clear if you're not going to be doing any sanding. This is applied exactly the same way as base coat. All it really is is a base coat without any color in it. There's a few different products you can use to, to do this. You could actually clear coat the hood and let it dry and then sand it and do your graphics and clear coat it again but that's kind of a waste of clear coat plus it's much more time consuming you gotta wait about a day just to let the cure the, the clear coat cure and then sand it and continue with your graphics and kind of a makes a long project out of something that can otherwise just be inner coat cleared you can sand the inner coat clear in an hour or so and then start on your graphics that way you don't disturb the metallics in the base coat because you're not you're not sanding the base coat you're sanding the inner coat clear rather than two separate coats I'm just doing each half of the hood just double coating it just to speed things up a little bit I should have uh, collapsed the cup by getting the air out of it I wouldn't have had so much trouble here at the end just hold the gun upside down and pull the trigger until paint comes out and that will remove the air without removing any of the paint until there's no air left.
that'll help get more of the product out and you can even spray upside down by doing that here I'm taking the leftover intercoat clear and I'm going to use it as a carrier for the gold pearl that I'm going to use to do the ghost flames it's a powder pearl it takes very little very little powder to get the effect that you're trying to get a little goes a long ways and it's very easy to overdo it I probably should have left it like that but I added just a tiny bit more and I ended up getting a, a little bit too much pearl on my flames I didn't do a test panel or anything like that so I was just eyeballing how much pearls in the inner coat clear and I probably put just a, a few a couple too many coats on the on the flames they didn't they didn't taper quite the way that I was hoping to but a test panel would have helped out with that maybe I'll demo a, doing a test panel in the future that's it